price for an AC application has been nearly mm -hmm. impossible. And here comes Curtis. Nice. All the time selling <laughs> these things to EV guys <laughs> and swearing up and down that they don't want anything to do with them and that they're really <laughs> about forklifts. It is kind of a numbers game. There's 50,000 forklifts a year, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> there's a handful oh, of EVs. A handful. Yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping to get them a little more interested in the EV community. But what I'm seeing here, nobody's going to run a forklift on this system. No. It is it's kind a, of set up where yeah. it would do a pump, but, but I just can't believe yeah. it. It would have to be a pretty deluxe forklift. This is clearly a first step uh, into a, an EV type situation. Not the highest voltage or highest power, um, no. but it's, uh, it's a step. Uh, we're getting that whole package uh, for $4,500. I've seen them $4,200 or $4,300. Um, and this um, kind of avoids the problems we were just talking about. With parts availability service. Yeah. All right. Curtis mm -hmm. is here in the country. Uh, they make thousands of these mm -hmm. things. Um, the high-performance golf cars guys seem to be new on the EV scene. Not. They've mm -hmm. been doing those motors for how long? 20 years? I think so. 20, 25 Plus years. Golf yeah. cars and, uh, you know, hunting buggies and you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, although this combination is going in a production EV called the Wego. Oh, we were talking about the Wego. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, we'll put a shot of that up on the magic screen uh, while editing. But uh, it's been like a little car neighborhood electric vehicle, but they're going to do a highway speed model, 55 miles an hour, uh, using this um, combination, the AC50 and the Curtis controller. The net gain, Warp 9, is pretty strong. It's a monster. Um, yeah. That Kelly controller that we used, in theory, is a 1,200-amp, 35-volt controller. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty good strength. It's not mm -hmm. a Zilla, right. uh, but it, it, it'll make it go. Uh, and so we're used to pretty good power in the Speedster. I want uh, simplicity. I don't want brushes. I don't want, you know, I want a little more elegant thing. Uh, we want AC, and we want regenerative braking. Yeah, I want the braking. Absolutely. I don't really want to give up any power. We do like power. More power More, is good. Yeah, we do like power. This, um, this controller is rated for 115 volts and 550 amps. And so is the motor. Now, I have it from your buddy at High Performance Golf Cars that this controller actually kicks out right a little bit over 130 volts. Right, yep, yeah, right there. We're kind of changing our adapter strategy to uh, EV. To uh, uh, electro-automotive. Electro-automotive. Yeah, electro-automotive. As an adapter, that'll get me a half inch on each side mm -hmm. of that transmission. Of that ring, yeah. We've been beat on these battery boxes so close. I think if we do that, we can get more cells in the back. Mm -hmm. And at this Looks point... Looks like it. I'm shooting at a 38 cell system of 180 amp hour blue sky um, batteries. 38 cells, 3.35 volts fully charged is 127.3 volts. We're good. Um, fully charged, that would probably sag under a mm -hmm. big current load. I might. I might get 118 or 120 volts. Mm -hmm. Let's say 118 volts. And we do the 550 amps that's rated at. That's 64,900 watts. These are goals. Am I going to get that? Hmm. Not, not very often. Not very often. Maybe. That's what we're going to shoot for. Uh, if our motor's 88% efficient, that is uh, 57 kilowatts, 57,112 watts. 
if I divide that by 746.5, that is 76.5 horsepower. I think that would be pretty cool. That's a, that's a nice number. I think that we could, I think we could, we could operate with 76 horsepower. Uh, despite the curves that are out there on this motor, if I uh, multiply that by 52, 52 and divide it by, let's say, uh, 2,500 RPM, that's 160 foot-pounds, Brian. They've that's been talking about this motor as being 110 foot-pounds in the forums. They're doing all this with spreadsheets, calculators, and a, and a spreadsheet they got from high-performance golf cars or Thunderstruck. I'm not sure which. Okay. But it's all based on um, 100 on lower voltage. Uh, on 96 volts yeah. and uh, with a sag voltage to 91, I think. Okay. And and 550 amps or so. So I think uh, we can beat that quite a bit. I think we can be up around 160 foot pounds, about 76 horsepower. But that means we have to take this to the voltage limit. And beyond, and beyond, as they say in Toy Story. <laughs> and we still have to get to 550 amps. How do we do that? What's my chant always with power? Uh, that uh, cooling equals more power. Heat. Heat. Heat's the problem. Yep. Let me uh, read from the good book. This is manual. Models 1234, 1236, and 1238, AC induction motor controllers. We're going to turn to the uh, first chapter of uh, installation wiring mounting the controller. You kind of have to learn how to read these things. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of emphasis. They don't want to tell you about bad things. <laughs> but let's see what we've got here. Mounting the controller. Mounting location should be carefully chosen to keep the controller as clean and dry as possible. All right. It is recommended that the controller be fastened to a clean, flat metal surface with four 6 millimeter, one quarter diameter bolts using the holes provided. A thermal joint compound can be used to improve heat conduction from the controller heat sink to the mounting surface. Additional heat sinking or fan cooling may be necessary <laughs> to meet the desired continuous readings. There you go. Um, and that's about all it says about that. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, overview items on this controller. We're not going to go through the whole list. I'm going to pick out a couple of them. Adaptation of control algorithm to motor temperature variation so optimal performance is maintained under widely varying conditions. What do you think that means? It sounds like that the controller is going to change uh, the amount of power based on the temperature. Hmm. Yeah, it does. How about power limiting maps allow performance customization for reduced motor heating and consistent performance over varying battery state of charge? Uh, What's that mean to you, Brian? Kind of the same thing. They're going to change how much power I can have based on, uh, on what's going on with motor heating and, uh, and the battery state of charge. Uh, it, 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 that That's kind of what sense. it says, yeah. How about thermal cutback warning and automatic shutdown provide protection to motor and controller? Well, that's a nice feature unless it gets hot, and then you don't get any power. Well, all right. <laughs> I'm going to flip to the back to the specs. Actually, I got them written down here. It says that linear cutback occurs at a uh, controller heat sink temperature of 85 degrees centigrade. And cut off occurs at 95 degrees centigrade. All right. That <clears throat> protects your equipment. This is, uh, yeah, I like <laughs> it that it does that instead of blowing Blow it up, up. <laughs> causing a fire, <laughs> or disabling your car. Right. It just cuts itself back in an orderly fashion. What it's really going to do when you see linear cutback, it's going to cut back the current or power output to get back 
to 85 degrees centigrade or below. And it's going okay. to keep doing that as long as it can. If it fails and it reaches 95, you're at zero power out. You're output. stuck, man. Okay. What does this mean? There's some people out there using this controller and the motors, and they're giving reports of their 